Hello and welcome to another episode of Talk About Games. I'm Ryan. And I'm Mike. And today the game I'm bringing you is Dragon's Lair for NES. And Ryan has... Factory Town. These games are so much alike, yeah. Mike. I just think that they're amazing how they fit I mean, together. It's the, essentially the same thing. Yeah, I know. Let's. Uh, I want to hear about Factory Town. Can we start with that? <laughs> yeah, we can start with Factory Town. So Factory Town is a top-down... Um, resource management game. Yeah, I guess the best way to think about it is, it we we played Satisfactory on this channel, where you're building things to build more different types of things to learn and unlock new things to build. Mm -hmm. So it's a game where you're just constantly trying to build up your factory town. Except, unlike Satisfactory, that is 3D. Mm -hmm. This game it's like top down is top down. Or as they said in Nintendo Power, helicopter view. Helicopter view, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this game doesn't have a realistic art style. Mm -hmm. I think the best way to explain it is a lot of the people in this game look like the little people figures. Like the Weebles? Like, yeah, whatever. like something yeah. like that. Yeah. Like I was thinking like the Fisher Price, like the farm. The little, little whatever. The little guys. They're that, called, they don't yeah. have arms or legs yeah. or anything. Yeah. And they sit in the tractor yeah. or whatever. And Those are like toys I had, but like it's hard to remember because you're so young when you play with that stuff. It's like it's like oh yeah, those things, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it's weird. That's probably the the part of toys that have grown the most. Now there's so many options. They make like Star Wars ones yeah. and stuff. But for us, we had the farm. We had the bus with Legos. It was like <laughs> a, the the Lego castle. Yeah. Just a castle. That's it. I and like with it's like, it's like the old Atari games. I had uh, skiing, baseball, boxing. Yeah, isn't it funny how simple things used to be? Right. I think it's like that in general. It's like, you know, television used to be like you'd watch. Uh, we were talking about this earlier. Like you'd watch the Brady Bunch and stuff. It was like such a simple thing, and things have gotten so. Yeah, crazy. everything has to have like deep lore, even if it's like the simplest thing. It has to have this whole right. like world. This game does not have that. Mm -hmm. This game has you have a town hall, just like you're playing like Warcraft 2 or something. One of my favorite games of all time. Yeah. Um, but you know, and, and you build out from there. But you know, the thing that's kind of interesting is unlike Sim City, mm -hmm. where there are SimCity has like negative external forces mm. like pollution or traffic. If or that bothers me about SimCity, taxes. Yeah, right. It's not like you're just building. In this game, the negative external forces, though, in a game like Warcraft Two, is like the army that's going to come kill you. Yeah. And the main question I'm going to have for you about this game is: Is there something that's going to come and hurt you and kill you in this game, or is it all just building? It's all just building. I really probably am going to play this game because I've been looking for something like this uh, for a while. Because so um, I, I don't want we're going to say everything you, you want to say about this game, but I just want to say this real quick. So I uh, in my leisure time. Uh, guess what I do in my leisure time? What do you do? I play video games. Wow. So I, what I'm saying is off stream. Yeah, I play games, and the kind of games I like to play off stream. I like to play Age of Empires off mm -hmm. stream, and I like to play uh, like like stuff like Warcraft and those type of games because I kind of like with the puzzle games. Like I have to think, and we've talked about how it's bad television and all that stuff. Me sitting playing Age of Empires is real bad television. Yeah, because number one, um, it's me sitting trying to figure things out, and I can't like in yeah. interact with the chat very much because I'm thinking. And also, um, I mean, it's like I'm, I'm thinking when I'm playing like Contra 3, but it's a different type of thinking. It's like more reactionary. Right. Where that's like I have to I can't like have a conversation and do it. Um, anyway, so but my problem is when I play like Age Empires is like I'm not that good at it. 
I like to play it. It's like a fun leisure game for me. But if I put, I can't set it to hard because I just die. Right. I just play it on like moderate because like that's as much as I can do. And then it gets to be too much. Yeah. And it creates like a sense to where it gets too hard and I'm like not like enjoying it. I just want to like dr- sip my coffee and like play the game and like not, I don't want to be like stressed yeah. out. So a game like this might be awesome for me. Um, You know what I like about this game too? Yeah. I can have on my other monitor like I can watch like I'm watching uh Zeta Gundam Mobile Suit Gundam Zeta okay right now which is a is the Gundam series from 1985 Oh that's cool okay yeah you know you ever like uh watch like any Macross stuff Yeah yeah actually you know what they're selling they're selling that at Walmart right now it's yeah. actually like on sale, you can get the Blu-rays. Yeah, I could. I I might might get into that one day. But anyway, yeah. So I can have that on my monitor over here, and I could be building my city over here. And the difficulty doesn't come from like, oh, you're gonna die, or all your people are gonna move out. The difficulty comes from you have only so much space, mm. you have only so many resources, and you're trying to get to the next technology level to get to the next population level, to get to the next like education level. So you're constantly trying to like, oh, I got to educate my people. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got to, my people need to be happier so that I, my population level goes up so I can get to the next one. Now, what's an example of like, how do you make a guy happier? Okay. So tell me, Ryan, how do you make a guy happier? Oh my God. (laughs) When you first start playing, you, the only thing you can do is take a, resource that is either a food or non-food resource and bring it directly to their house oh like doordash yeah that yeah so, sure that makes you happy <laughs> so when you start the game when you start the game you need coins mm-hmm. and when you start the game there's yellow coins and there's red coins mm-hmm. there's other resources that come out later but there's yellow coins and red coins okay and are they different wh- what's a red coin do so the red coins come from giving them non-food and the yellow coins come from giving them food. What do you mean non-food? Like wheat is food, but cotton is not food. Oh, okay. So like a material. Yes. Like stone or something? Yeah. Okay. Stone is one of them. Okay. Um, they, I don't think they want stone though. There's like a list of what they want. Okay. They want, they want stone bricks. Wood. But you can't make... What are we doing that? No, I meant like a material that <laughs> yeah. they could bring. So yeah. they don't want. We could do that. They don't want wood. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody got <laughs> any <laughs> wood? <laughs> he did the jackalope too, you know. Oh yeah, fast as fast can be. Never touch me. <laughs> um, stories from your friends next door. <laughs> you never told. <laughs> they. Okay, so so they want when it comes to wood and stone, mm-hmm. they want wood and stone that's been upgraded in a building. So you can't build a street out of stones, but you can build it out of stone bricks. Okay. Okay. So you you want to get to the point where you're upgrading you're you're taking the raw materials and turning them into new things. Okay. Like for instance, you could turn um paper that comes from from wood and cotton that comes from a cotton farm. You turn the cotton in the cloth, you turn the wood in the paper, you put them together and you turn them into a book. And then you take the book and to the, the li- or to the school. To, to the school mm-hmm. and then And that improves your education. That improves your education. Okay. So then you get general education points. Okay. So the general education points allow you to upgrade general education technologies. And are you like increasing like intelligence? Yes. So, a when they when they get intelligence, mm-hmm. they're happier. Mm-hmm. So that allows you to get a larger population because the happier you get the population, the larger it can get. Also, you get those general education points, which then you can spend those to research general technologies. But then you're going to run out of general technologies, and you're going to have to get uh, mechanical technologies or. What are general technologies, like a fire department or something? Like, no, like a general – but remember, there's no disasters. Remember, everything is – Oh, right, is, right, right. So there's no crime. There's no disasters. So you don't have to have those kind of places. There is places. only production. Okay. So there's lumber mills and workshops and barns to store materials in. 
And then when it first starts, you have literal people carrying everything around. But then eventually you get to the point where you it's get like a cart or something where they upgrade to you get a cart, like you said. But then it's like, well, carts still need to be on the roads. They still clog things up. Mm-hmm. What if we get the conveyor belts? Mm-hmm. What if we start building mine carts? Mm-hmm. What if we start building trains? What if we start building like super bullet trains? What right. if we start building and eventually it gets to the point. Replicators. Po- <laughs> eventually it gets to the point where it's absurd, where it's like. I'm going to build a mana forge and start like having like like wizards and elemental oh, so powers. This is, has fantasy elements too. It's not yeah. like so realistic. It starts very starts grounded. grounded. Okay. But there are different ages. And as you get up the tech tree, you get to the different ages where when you first start, everything's wood, everything's like dirt roads. Mm-hmm. Now we have paths and carts. Oh, now we have trains. What age would a mage place be? Because when I think mages, I think like medieval, but really to get from like a, like re- in our society in real life, we don't have mages. Like we'd have to advance in somehow in society to get to that point. So, so what ages are there? So I'm not there yet. You're not, oh, you're not there yet. But. I'm starting to get into mines mm. and mine shafts mm-hmm. and things. And I'm noticing that the world is a little more three-dimensional than I first thought. Mm-hmm. So I'm feeling that the the elementals that you need, because the, the whole point of the game is to have the happiest possible population and build an omni temple. Hmm. Okay? And the Omni Temple... It's like a Jedi Temple or something. I guess. Yeah, right. But it's... From looking at the tech trees, there's like... You could build fire temples and earth temples and wind temples and things, right? Right. So what I feel the challenge is going to be as we move into this new era, mm-hmm. the challenge is going to be having very efficient conveyor belts and trains just producing large quantities of items yeah but also finding those super rare resources and uphold you know yeah keeping them safe it's almost like like in minecraft like you want to find the obsidian and the diamonds right haven't found them yet one of these days i'll play minecraft yeah i, I never have but i do have a friend that's, oh that's uh he's not very good at it but he likes <laughs> to play it yeah yeah but yeah, I, I think i've seen your friend yeah he's in law enforcement <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. Did you know, did you know I only made uh, two videos in my whole life? <laughs> there are only two. Oh, yeah. One starred uh, Inspector Gadget. And the other starred Elmo. Uh, Elmo. And those are the only two things I've ever done. Ever. Ever. Wow. And, or ever will do. <laughs> <laughs> According to the internet. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So, there's one thing I don't like about Factory Town. What's that? I don't like how I feel when I finish playing and I stand up because it has been like. You pass out. Hours. <laughs> no, it's been like hours, and I'm like yeah. standing up, I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, you, these type of games, like, I've played ones that are like Egypt and Greece, and you're building, it's city skylines, yeah. and it's, and you get invested. Oh, yeah. It takes hours and hours and hours. And it's just not healthy. No, it's not. To sit for hours and hours and hours and not sleep. As, and not... as Ryan looks directly in my eyes and says this to me, like, hey, Mike, <laughs> did you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's the difficult thing because if you want to get anywhere in this game, like at first I'm like, oh, they're bringing the wood over here. And then they're like running out of wood and I'm like, crap, I'm running out of wood. What am I going to you know, do? I, 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 I can be conscious of that some days where it's like when I'm on stream, I'll take breaks. Yeah, and I'll usually like go get a drink or whatever, and then I come back and whatever, and I try to like get away from it for a minute because sometimes I do like like long streams, but my uh, my streams compared to a lot of people are fucking nothing. Like I'll, I usually my a typical average stream for me is like three to four hours. Okay, that's shit compared to a yeah. lot of streamers. A lot of people sit there ten hours, twelve hours. Some people do 24 hours and stuff, and I don't know how you can do that. I'm going to tell the audience. I'm going to let the audience in on a little secret that yeah. you know. Yeah. I can only stream for like- Two hours. Two hours. I know. After two hours, I'm done. I'm so done. Yeah. Yeah. And Mike's just like, oh, I guess we better wrap this one up. I can tell. And it's really, it's really funny. It's it's it, You know what it is, actually? 
it's about the length of a movie. Yes. And I think uh, there, there's probably some kind of reason why Hollywood wants the time limit. I mean, people, you have to drive there. People get hungry. People have to go to the bathroom, stuff like that. So, And sitting in a seat for that long, most people can do probably about that long. So I think there's a lot of concern there with the length of – um, movies. I'm the type of person where I don't mind a long movie, even to go to a theater, and I, I, I'll go see a three-hour movie if it's a good movie. Right. If I, I'm sitting in a movie I don't like for three hours, it's I'm I'm a I, I'm not a nice person to be around because I don't want to fucking be there. It's it's funny. My my wife, God bless her soul, we were watching Dune, mm-hmm. the new Dune. Is it longer? It's like two and a half hours. Mm-hmm. And we're watching it. I heard it's really good. It is really good. Yeah. And we're watching it, and it's like Paul Atreides and the Benny Gesserits, and we're landing on Arrakis, and yeah. there's gigantic ships and sci-fi shit everywhere. And I'm yeah. like, fuck yeah. Yeah. This is awesome. Did she not like it? And she's sitting there, and she's like, oh, it's a pretty good movie. Oh, she's good. I'm like, wow, that's really nice of you. Because yeah. when she was, we watched about, about an hour and 15 minutes of it. Yeah. And she's like, hey, you know, maybe we can come back to this tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, did you not go to the theater? (laughs) So the only reason I ended up watching Dune. Yeah. I ended up buying it when I got home. Okay. Me and Justin and Kieran Mm -hmm. went to see The Matrix. Mm -hmm. Not the new Matrix that's out by the time this video comes out. Oh, like a Fathom event? Yeah. Yeah. So the Matrix was in theaters. Mm-hmm. And we're like, we're going to see the Matrix in theaters. It's going to be awesome. So we get our tickets. We go to the theater. We sit down. Everybody's like, people are like dressed in like shit. Alpha, like it's, yeah. it's like crazy. Right, right. So we sit down and <laughs> the previous play. And we're like, oh, but this is like a Fathom event. So there shouldn't be like all these previews. But we're like, oh, maybe, you know, they're doing the previews but it was like the normal like the uh, yeah oh like, were you in like the wrong theater or something no no, no. yeah the dancing popcorn man or yeah. whatever comes <laughs> out <laughs> yeah. you know and then the movie starts and it's dune uh yeah so what ended up happening is the people at the theater fucked up and they didn't cue the event oh my god but those events come in over like satellites it's yeah. not like there's like a disc so we so missed just, it. Did you end up just sitting there then? Well, they started playing it, yeah. and they played it for like five minutes, and we're about to go to Arrakis and do yeah, sand right. shit, and they cut the movie, and it sits on a f- <laughs> frozen frame for 10 minutes. Yeah. Yo, did you go to that theater that was like a fucking looks like the Death Star? Where? Yes. Yeah. 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 That theater that theater is the most dystopian like I hate it. It's black. I hate it. Yeah. Oh. Like it like a place like it should have like like a comfy feel. Like yeah. that ain't comfy. This that looks theater, like that looks like the fucking uh Darth Vader should walk by. This theater is evil. Yeah. It it's is. an evil black marble orange piercing orange. It's disgusting. Regal. It's awful. Yeah. And there's no people. There's nobody. You don't see a soul. Because it's not comfy, because nobody wants to be there. Yeah. It's it's her And it makes you think of like if Star Wars was real. Yeah. Like you wouldn't want to be on the fucking Death Star. You think you watch the movie and it's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. But like you don't want to be on the Death Star. It's cold and it's like metal. Yeah, and it's you know? gigantic. It yeah. goes on forever. Yeah, it's it's scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's awful. Like, <laughs> like that theater, that theater is the most they're like, they're like, get the fuck out of lobby. <laughs> Go see your fucking movie and leave. Yeah. Because we don't want, we want this to be the most inhospitable. We wouldn't have oxygen in here if we didn't have to. <laughs> We'd suck it out. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so the game. Yes. I was, that was the best I had to get us back on game topic. So the game. So the game. The remember factory. So we're, so we're building stuff. <laughs> so, so. It's resource management. It is purely resource management. And that's really fun for me. Yeah. I got my little barns and I'm moving. My little guys are moving my. So I looked at a little footage of it because Ryan was playing it. And, yeah. uh, or I'm sorry, I, I watched Ryan play a little bit of it. And the gameplay reminded me of um, uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon, like that kind of it stuff. It has the little paths. Roller and Coaster everything. Kingdom, all that yeah. stuff. It's a similar sort of game to that. Um, where when I play that game, though, 
I want it to be more than just building a theme park. Like mm-hmm. I want to be able to do other stuff. Uh, when I played that game, and these games are kind of like a guilty pleasure. It's like you don't go around telling your friends like, hey, you know what I play? Yeah. Roller Coaster Kingdom. You know, it's like yeah. cool, dude. Yeah. You know, but uh, so I started playing that game sort of like jokingly. I'm like, oh, Roller Coaster yeah. Kingdom. Like, check this out. And then I ended up put spending like ten hours building all of the Magic Kingdom. Wow! Like like exactly. Yeah. And, I, and then by the end of it, I was like, I can't ever tell anybody this. So here's footage of it. <laughs> you know, here's um, Mike's scale model of yeah, everything. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, but this game though uh, is probably a little more interesting because it seems like you can do a lot more than just plop rides down. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, it, you know it's it's very much about uh, like like how am I going to arrange things so that the conveyor belts don't get clogged up, so that we're continuously building things so that things aren't being wasted. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't have an efficient path where the stuff actually gets used, you end up having all the shit. It's like, what am I going to do with two hundred and fifty wheels? <laughs> You know, right, it's right. like those 250 wheels, we got to like move them around and take them places. Yeah. And you can't just like junk it. You have to like you can use it. junk it. You can junk you it. You can junk it, but it's like. Then you waste it. Then I, I cut down trees. You know mm. how long it, how much it costs to replace a tree? Right. Right. Like we're going to have to sell, you know, a hundred of this and that. So it's do. a lot of like management and it's probably, these kind of games are like not for everybody. No. And, and I know that, but, uh. I like this kind. I like this. I do. It it, especially when it's top down like that. Like the three D stuff. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah. I mean, I I think I like Satisfactory better. Yeah. Yeah. But not by much. Okay. Like there's a place in the world for both. Yeah. Right. Um. But but Factory Town is a deep experience. There is like a huge tech tree. I haven't even scratched the surface. I would like to know, like, I wonder what late game looks like, you know? Yeah, when you're doing all the mana stuff yeah. and the magic and you have, like, m- magnetic railways and stuff. I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. I-, I hope I get there, but, you know, it's like, I can only take so much of this, like, hours and hours of gameplay. That's what happens. Well, it's probably, like, 50 hours to get there. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. And and we got more episodes to do, so you got to play another game. So you don't have right? time to become a mage. Well, I kind of I kind of like that though because I I like you know having to put time in. But like a game like Kirby that we did recently, like yeah. I beat that. It's nice to be able to finish something. It's nice to be able to finish it. Yeah. But then games like this are satisfactory. That's the nice thing about retro games uh, is that you can, you know, yeah. I mean, some of them are hard, but usually like you can get through it and finish it or finish most of it. You know, whereas games today just like they're so jam packed and going forever. But um, yeah. I got a retro game for you. Do you? I do. Uh, which we mentioned earlier. I'm going to be talking now about Dragon's Lair for the NES. So, um, and to be clear, th- mm. he's talking about the NES Dragon's Lair. Oh, geez, I guess I should start with that. Uh, so the arcade game is a beautifully animated game by Don Bluth. And if you don't know that name, it's basically like almost like what a Disney feature film would look like. And I think somebody probably had the idea of, you know, there's probably a lot of people that don't like what you want to play Pac-Man or this or that. How do we get people into these arcades to get them to spend money? And somebody came up with the, I think, kind of brilliant idea to make something look like an animated cartoon instead. And that's what they tried to do. The problem is that technically, like... Gameplay wise, I don't. I mean, there's going to be people that disagree, but I don't think Dragon's Lair, the arcade game, is a very fun game because it's all just me- it's nothing but active mem- time, active time. It's just memorization, and like once you learn, okay, I have to hit right on that screen. You always know on that screen that you have to hit right. Then on the next screen, oh, at this time I have to hit up, and it's just it's just memorization, and I don't know. That's just. Dragon's Lair Arcade's never been for me gameplay wise, but man, 
that is some of the most beautiful animation like ever. Like has, it's beautiful. Has anybody ever edited it together so that you could just like watch, watch it, it as a movie? Probably. Yeah. I'm sure on YouTube somebody's probably got something similar to that. I'm, yeah. I'm sure where you just you know see all the footage. And then there's like other games like Space Ace and stuff that mm. are basically the same. Thing. Yeah. There's there's and there's there's other ones like that. Uh, there's definitely other examples of people that tried to do stuff like that. And I think th- there is an audience for that. There are people that like those. I just don't personally really like that. I used to have a uh, dragon. Slayer, the arcade game, like on PC, like in the '90s, and I would play it then. I would try to do it, but it just—I remember that's like a room with like a checker floor, and you just gotta like remember, like at the right time, at the right animation cue, to you know move Dirk the right way at the right time, and it just kind of. Eh. There's better games to play. I have a question. Speaking of like yeah. weird alternative arcade games, mm-hmm. do you remember the Sega like holographic? It's like a white thing and the game is a hologram it's not like a screen no it's a sega game is it like arcade or what only arcade and it uses like the same effect as like the haunted mansion oh wow where like the but but it's a screen it's not like it's a physical you don't know the name of it i don't know the name of it okay it's like it's not called like flashback but it's called something well maybe somebody in the comments will know what you're talking about but like i figured you would know about this but yeah i might i just i'm not literally like a hologram like a projected the hologram game i'd love to know what you're talking about i'm not sure and like that's like lost now i mean i'm sure there's working machines right but it's not like nobody talks about it. you can play that on your pc or talk about it yeah well there's a lot of old games like that that are kind of lost the time um yeah but okay so dragon's lair the nes version so i'm weird with games and it's like most this is a game that most people wouldn't play or wouldn't want to play um and it's not that good of a game um but sometimes i play bad games so here we go um so uh this is a game like the arcade game where i just said you know the arcade game requires memorization of at this specific animation frame you got to do this or you got to do that this game is the same in terms of memorization on the first screen what you're trying to do is there's a there's a bridge and there's a castle, and there's like a little dragon that pops out, and you have to know to walk to a certain point on the bridge, and then you got to turn around, you got to walk back, and then you got to duck. And if you don't do all the, and then you've got to flip around and start throwing like uh, knives at this dragon. If you don't know this precise way to do all of those things, you'll die because the dragon will pop up, or you'll fall into the water, or this or that, and you'll just die. So it's definitely it's a game of trial and error and seeing what works and what doesn't work. But when you figure out one thing, like, okay, I walked, oh, and I fell in the water. That didn't work. Let me try it again. So I, you walk and then, okay, I walked a little further. Now I'm standing on a bridge. That one piece of progress is in information. And you, you just got to be the type of person that has to want to be willing to die and do something over and over again. But that's how you learn this game and how you figure out um, how you figure out screen to screen uh, what what to do. And this is an interesting game for me to have to try to uh, just talk about without right. like like actually showing it. Um, my my problem with that is that it seems like the game doesn't represent what it actually is. Like, you start it, it looks like a million NES games. Like, you're playing Wizards and Warriors or whatever. You, when you first look at it, if you saw a screenshot in Nintendo Power, you might think, oh, that might be like a side-scroller or something. And, yes. it, and it's, well, it is technically, but it's totally different. So once you know the path, mm-hmm. can, can you, is there any variability or can you consistently execute? There's no um, exact path. Mo- most of it you're doing the same exact thing over and over, but uh, there's a little bit of uh, RNG, ran- yeah. or like randomness uh, in there uh, where like certain enemies, the enemies come out d- sort of differently sometimes, but a lot of it's the same. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of both. 
Right. It's kind of like you're walking along the same path. Like if you play the game, you know that the second level is going to be you're walking in the dungeon and every time the guy's going to his he's going to his face is going to come out the window and he's going to throw the rocks and you have to stop in front of the rocks. You know that. But then there's other enemies that come out uh at certain points like sometimes there's like flying skulls and stuff that uh might sort of appear a little bit more randomly but it's mostly doing the same thing over and over for the most part this is a game i would say you'd be able to like speed run um even though it does have those like sort of small elements of like randomness to it it's, because it's a little interesting that what way. you're describing to me it sounds like having a perfectly executed run yeah is something that's a possible and b it could be interesting to try and do yes yeah. Um a- yeah, absolutely. Um and people think of this game as like impossible and it, it it's not like as impossible as as you'd think. Mm-hmm. Um cuz it's like you can you, I you could take a controller and you could make a guy So one of the things like you might have to do is like there's a, like I just said there's like a guy throwing rocks and you you have to know that on this spot not here but this spot, you have to stop. So you have to know that your toe has to touch. And it's very specific. Very specific. Like down yes. two pixels. Um, and a lot of people don't want to do that. How does it compare to another game that we played, to um, Splatterhouse 2? That's a good comparison. Yes. Uh, it's much more into the nitty gritty than that. Okay. Where uh, in Splatterhouse 2, there's like certain enemies where you, you know that... This enemy's here. He's going to throw a fireball, so you have to know to stop beforehand. But Splatterhouse is more like beat him up. You You're can going. Still fight you some. can still fight and go. And you, I think you, yeah. I think you have like life, and I kind of forget at the moment. Um, but that's a little bit more. You can get through it quicker. This is very. Uh, if you, you know, uh, you, well, you do, you do have a health bar. There's, there's a like, like a lot of things to say here. So, um, there's different weapons that you can get in this game, and the, and the, the weapons that you get and the things that you get are uh, determined by a letter. So, uh, you, you get, uh, you have an energy bar and you have a candle. And uh, which, you know, most Great. people, most, most people say, you know, when they first play this game, they just fall into the wa- lava, they, you fall into the water and then they hit the reset button to turn it off. They don't know any of these things. Right. So like there, so there's a candle. So when you turn the candle on um, you, by hitting the select button, there's a, there's a meter and it's as if your candle is running out. Um, so let's say the room is dark. It's like lighting the candle, but the candle might run out. You have to know to be standing in a certain spot. Like if you're standing here, no. But if you're standing here and you hit that select button, you're, now your candle starts running and a letter will appear above your head and it might be an A. Well, you jump and you get the letter and the A is for Axe. And what I find funny is that the Don Bluth animated arcade game is like this beautiful – beautifully animated <laughs> thing. And in the NES version, they couldn't even make an icon – that like it should be like a drawing of an axe and it's right. just the letter a yeah because this is it's not a good game right you know um they were just catching in they're like we're gonna throw the logo on there what are you making who cares just just put it out you know what they did do though and yeah. w- one of the things that kind of makes the game bad but it also makes it interesting is that dirk himself has more animation to him than you'll see in a lot of NES games, when he ducks, um, you hit down on the D-pad for him to duck. You are committed to that duck for right. a good second and a half. Because he's not, like, oh. It's not like Mario where it's one frame and he just he yeah. ducks and he's, he's holding his hat or yeah. whatever. It's not like that. He's ducking and you see like several frames of animation until you're ducked. So you have to kind of do everything in advance. So there on one of the later stage on the fourth level the one with the grim reaper um there's parts where there's i don't even know what to call them like booby traps uh where there's these like maces sort of like mm-hmm. spinning and shit yeah. and you have to like get by them um so when the mace starts when it gets to a certain point and you know okay i i'm going to have this is the timing for me to go um 
you start walking and then you know, okay, here comes the mace again. I'm going to have to duck under it or something. You have to do it a little early so that he he has the time. So is he because he's ducking and then the mace goes by. And then when the mace is like over you, yeah. you hit up. You have to start getting up like early. You have to you have to start getting up early. Yeah, I I don't know. Um, so the so let's just go through. So the so the first level is um it's the drawbridge. Second level is the dungeon. Third level is the mine. Fourth level is the torture chamber, I guess. And then the last level is the is the dragon. Oh boy! And uh. Uh, so so wait you beat this like legitimately you beat this game 100 percent, and i could do it right now wow yeah wow. put me in front of an nes i'll do it now the only thing about it is i can't do it every time yeah uh so this is a game where it's not a long game so it's like a it's like you do a run um so <laughs> this is like a tw- i don't know maybe 20 minutes or something okay and then um i could like if we did it right now i could make it to the dragon 100 percent. but when you get to the, once i get to the dragon that's where the it's gonna go crazy so i just want to jump into that there's a lot of like sp- so so is this yeah. like so this is like a party trick you can do like hey guys i got better party tricks but <laughs> you um, want to see you want to see, see a party trick <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so uh <laughs> wow dragon's lair uh <laughs> uh so um, puff the magic dragon, uh-huh. live by the sea. Uh, <sighs> Pete the dragon. What dragons can we name? Hmm. Uh. This is Sma- Smaug, the, Smaug, the Lord of the Rings, or uh, the Hobbit, the Desolation of Smaug. Dude, fuck that movie title. <laughs> like, I hate that. Uh. Anyway, you know what? The Hobbit was a book for children that was like two hundred pages. Like, why? Why do we have to have like? Make three, three movies. movies. Like, come it's on. You know why? Stupid. Because money. 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 Yeah. Like the answer. And We've done that before. Yeah. That bit. So um, <laughs> there's a lot of levels. And I like I could, if you want to like see every single thing, wa- like watch my stream. But there's the, the part that I want to talk to Ryan about is the is the last stage and the, and the dragon and everything. Because that's what this game is all okay, about. Okay, we're in the last stage. We yeah, got the dragon. We're in the last stage. We're at the dragon. So you get to if you're you know because most, most people when they play this game they're going to complain about the first level because that's as far as most people are going to get maybe into the second stage but the people that make it to the dragon or not many people are going to put through the effort to make it to the dragon so that's why i want to talk about this because it's the biggest bullshit part of the whole fucking game um so the last level what it entails is there's a bunch of baby dragons as you go through the last level or excuse me, there's dragon eggs and there might be a dragon egg. And you know that when you kind of get close to the dragon egg, it's going to start hatching. And once you see one like line appear on the egg, you have to be throwing your axes at it or you're, you're, you're fucking dead. So you're like, you're like watching. All right, here's the dragon egg, and then you take one step, and you see this you crack. You see the thing cracking. You duck, and you like immediately start like throw, throwing your axes and all this, and then you can kill the dragon. And if if it starts coming towards you, you might have to like back up and flip around to kill the dragon. All this stuff. It's it's like that. But you go you go through the stage, and you kill dra- baby dragon after baby dragon after baby dragon, and then you finally get near the end. And here's what happens. So there's a platform. And it has a letter D on it, um, which is the, which is for a, it's the knife. And at that point, you've already you can upgrade your weapon a couple times. You can upgrade it the first time, like I said before. Uh, you can upgrade it to an axe, and then better than that, you can get a fireball at one point in the state. At one point, that's on the stage with the Grim Reaper, and the fireball is the best weapon. It's the strongest weapon, but if you get it, you have to like. It's very specific on how you get it. And the fireball can only go pretty much straight. Where the axe, I feel like you can throw it a little bit faster. And it the axe also kind of curves down a little bit. Okay. So I recommend the axe if you're going to do this because of what I'm going to explain. Now I wish I, had the, uh, I wish I had the board this time, but that's all right. <laughs> all right. So, um, so you get to this platform. And the dragon's right after the platform. And this platform... Uh, it has a it's a downgrade to your weapon and you don't do not want 
you need your axe if you're going to fight the dragon because you start with uh, just the little throwing knife. Right. If you get to the dragon and you only have the throwing knife, you're not going to beat the game because you have to like throw the knife like a thousand times at the dragon. Like and you're going to die because it's really fucking hard to do. So you have you got to you got to keep that axe. So what happens is this. So let's say that this is the platform. Okay. Okay, so you see this little piece like right here? Yes. And this is the whole platform? Yep. Dirk has to jump from here to right there. Right. There's like a one pixel, two pixel thing that you have to jump on. Yeah. Then a baby dragon's over here and the egg starts to crack and then you have to flip around on that one thing and then jump back. Cause and then here comes the baby dragon. It's coming after you. And then you then you you're because there's water like right here. Right. And you jump from here to here. And the reason why you have to jump here is because the downgrade weapon is right here. So if you were to jump, right, so a, if you jumped as far a as little you further, could. if you jump as far as you could, uh, like a normal jump, you're gonna hit that downgrade. Yeah. And then the dragon's right after, and you're gonna lose the whole game. Mm. So here's the thing. Let's say you fucked up and you jumped a little bit too far, and you got that item. Guess what? You're resetting your Nintendo because <laughs> it, you can't just kill yourself and then redo the stage because. There's no point after that for you to get another axe. Right. It's it's game over. So you have to jump on this little one, maybe two pixel thing. And then you flip around, jump back, flip around again. And kill, start shooting. Kill the baby dragon. Now you're good to go to the dragon. So then you do it again. You make the jump. You jump onto the, uh, the, the one frame thing. And then you got that fucking item right there. Then what can happen, and it happened to me, and I was so fucking pissed off, I accidentally jumped wrong, and right. I got the item and downgraded, oh, and you you know me and my streams. Yeah, you flipped out. I flipped out, yeah. and then I have to do the whole fucking game from the beginning. Anyway. Yeah. So I want to talk about baby dragons okay. for a second. Sure. So uh, World of Warcraft, let's go back to original World of Warcraft. Yeah. Uh, a lot of memes came out. And the memes, there were two memes, and they were both related to dragon whelps. Yeah. The first one was the- Dragon whelps? Dragon whelps, which are baby dragons. Oh, okay. Which is what they're called in the game. Yeah. And it involves dragon eggs, and it's- I think we should bring that term back. Like, if you're going to insult somebody- call Dragon whelp. 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 I like that. Yeah. So you're in Anixia's lair, and Anixia is a gigantic, big dragon that- you know, you need a full, huge raid party to fight. And around the edge of where she is are all these eggs. And the eggs go around the sides and they go down in front of like the ramp you come down to get in. And there's just eggs everywhere. And I think these these raids originally were 40 man. Mm -hmm. But then raids became 10 and 25, man. So when they remastered this fight... It became harder? It became easier oh, because easier. there was less people. I would think it would have been... If there's less people, I thought it would be... Well, it has less health and things based on how many people there are. Oh. So they remastered it in Wrath of the Lich King. But in the original fight, you had to get 40 people. And these 40 people all had to stand in the middle. Mm-hmm. And there are eggs all around. Mm -hmm. And Anixia would pick a lane, like left, left, middle, right, to go. And she would breathe fire down like this in a line. Yeah. So you're fighting. And there's other enemies that appear that come up from the sides. Yeah. And then they have to be taken on. And then she, she goes in the air and she lines up. And now she's going to be here. So if you're standing here and the fire comes down, yeah. you're dead. Yeah. So you have to get out of the way. Yeah. But when you have to get out of the way, where are you going to go? You you got to go towards the middle, but there's 40 people. Yeah. And they're all online. Yeah. And they're all assholes. Right? <laughs> so <laughs> where, where do they go? Yeah. They go... In the fucking eggs. Uh-huh. And when they go into the fucking eggs, yeah. then the eggs hatch. Oh, no. So now you're fighting the dragon. There's always like a, a dragon lord. Yeah. That, so, so you have these things called... <laughs> so, so the warriors have to get... Every big enemy yeah. needs to have a, a warrior or a paladin 
or a druid, well, back then it was pretty much just warrior, has to have one of these tanks that holds on to it and taunts it and shouts at it because they can take the damage. Mm. But your healers and your mages and your rogues, they can't take the damage. Uh -huh. So your rogue or your mage or whatever runs through the whelps and then they all hatch. <laughs> so now you got the big ass dragon that is breathing fire. Yeah. You got the the dragon lord dudes that constantly appear, that constantly need to be handled. You're fighting them. And then some asshole just <laughs> ran and woke up all the whelps. Yeah. So, YouTube had just come out basically then. Yeah, this is like yeah, 2006, yeah. right? So, people were recording their raids yeah. to YouTube. Yeah. And this guy, so when you kill Anixia, the like three or four items would drop. Mm -hmm. It might have been more than that, you, you know, but a handful, less than 10. Say. Okay. But there's 40 people. So everybody's fighting for the item. So they had to come up with a system mm -hmm. of how to divvy up the loot. Mm. But since it's 40 people, they all have jobs, they all have school, they all have this. Attendance is a problem. Yeah. Because if you don't have 40 people, you can't do it. Right. So what they did is they came up with this idea of dragon kill points. Yeah. Or DKP. So is this like you had to get like 40 friends? 40. Or, or, or 40 people? Well, they all had to be geared right. Not like when you like log into Fortnite and it just like populates. No, with... there there was no raid finder. Okay. There was you had to like go on like a forum and be like, "Yo, so tonight oh, on shit. this server we're doing this." So people show up. If you had enough people to show up, they would give them these dragon kill points that somebody would keep track of in a spreadsheet, right? Yeah, because it's not like the game supports it. After that, they created like auto loot rolling like, and grid paper. All the shit. So somebody's sitting there with a with a spiral <laughs> notebook, like writing writing down. Gandalf yeah. gets seven points, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. So so they're writing and they like Gimli gets <laughs> this many points, right? <laughs> like yeah. so they're doing all of that. So. And then there'd be a raid leader. Yeah. And everybody would get on like Skype or TeamSpeak or Ventrilo. There's been so many services, you know, whatever. Everybody would get on like voice chat. Yeah. And then there'd be a raid leader. Yeah. And the raid leader would keep track of the dragon kill points. <laughs> and it's all, you know, this is supposed to be a recreational activity. Yeah. But at this point, it's not. Yeah. So there's this dude and he's in there and he's recording his... The raid yeah. as the raid leader, and some asshole. They're like they pull the, they pull the dragon. They all get in the room. They're all badasses. We're gonna kill this dragon. And I see the first phase of the fight when she's on the ground, and then she goes up in the air, and it's gonna be the fire. And they're like, "Oh, it's fire on the right. Everybody go left." And you see this dude. <laughs> Just in the distance, <laughs> you see this dude, and he just like, <laughs> just like runs like all the way, like, like around the like fucking thing, like after after these people like, oh like you know they had to like everybody's schedule and everything and the dragon yeah, right. kill points and all this, and this dude's just like <laughs> like around the side and there's like like a thousand <laughs> of these like dragon whelps yeah. and the, the raid leader dude who's like very serious he's like he's like Gimli go this way yeah. you know Melchior go this way <laughs> right like the serious guy Right? He's like, he's like doing all this shit. And then he's like, he's like, he starts flipping out. He's like, mini whelps, handle it. <laughs> and, and he's like, many whelps. And he keeps saying, many whelps, handle it. And he's freaking out. And then everybody dies because like the dragons just come down and he stops and he's like, 50 DKP minus. <laughs> Oh my god. Like he's just like, for you and you, yeah, and he just yeah, like yeah. dies. Like you hear him like like he must have like knocked his keyboard off the <laughs> the like the yeah, dude's like right. done. Yeah. And then he's just screaming. And the video gets uploaded to YouTube. Yeah. And <laughs> 
So in Wrath of the Lich King, they remixed the fight. Mm-hmm. And they added achievements to the game. Mm-hmm. And the achievement for beating the remixed Anixia's Lair, mm-hmm. I think, was... Uh, there was one where if you beat it without any of the whelps hatching, mm-hmm. the achievement was many whelps handle it, uh, which comes based from that on the video. YouTube yeah, video. Right. That's cool. Right? Yeah. So I know all about baby dragons. Baby dragons. Yeah. So, so I got more to tell you, though, about baby dragons. I didn't even get into it. <laughs> right. So, okay. okay. <laughs> so, so I already explained the... Uh, back to Dragon's Lair. We already uh, explained the, you know... You get the D, you get downgraded. But you pa- let's say you get past it. You get past it, you keep walking, and here's here's the final screen. So half of the screen, and you would probably think it's an interesting screen because you've talked to, to me about like how some of like the Mega Man bosses, what the like the layers that the 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 boss robots on compared to like because if you have like a really big like right. sprite. On like, uh, and you know, like uh, it'll double- be a black background because the enemy is the background. Yeah, that all that. Yes. yes. So half the screen is the dragon on the right side, and then you just got Dirk, and you walk to the middle, and then it starts flashing, and then you got to know to back. You, you got to know to back up. So you're on the all the way on the left. Well, of your few pixels to the right, because you don't want to be all the way. Because when he throws his uh, axes, it won't reach. So you're like a few pixels away from the side of the screen. Um, but so the dragon does two things. And I'm pretty sure only two things. And you were talking about the fire breathing down in in that. And what's interesting is this dragon doesn't breathe fire. It breathes smoke. Mm-hmm. So the smoke goes straight across the screen horizontally. And then it's at the height of Dirk's head. So... You would imagine you have to duck yeah. if if the smoke goes across the screen. So you know to duck. But if the smoke's coming across the screen, you got to know to duck early. So when the smoke is like halfway across the screen, you duck. It passes. Before it passes, you're already standing back up. You got to like time it right. It's very like, you know, time it right. Here's the second thing the dragon does. Out of its stomach, it just appears. It's the NES. Comes baby dragons. And the baby dragons uh, sort of fly all over the screen, but on the lower half. And you have to kill the baby dragons by throwing your axes. And why I recommend the uh, the axe is because, like I said, the axe kind of goes in an arch down. And because these baby dragons are coming out of the lower part of the stomach, you want to be able to have something that can kind of arch down to kill the dragons. So you, you chuck a couple axes, you duck because the, because the smoke is coming above your head. You, so it's a lot of, you're ducking, standing back up, ducking, standing back up continually until you got to basically get a good rhythm on the timing of that smoke Cause it's like pixel, like perfect shit. Like you gotta like stand and duck, stand and duck. Like as soon as that smoke passes, his head's got to be up and stuff like that. But also getting a rhythm for when to throw when to throw the axes to get rid of the dragons. So it's this combin. Oh, and oh, uh, here's the other thing. Uh, I'm sorry. And the dragon. So the the dragon blows the smoke across the screen, but sometimes. Uh, the only time you can get a hit in on the dragon itself okay. is, uh, I, t- I almost totally forgot, this is the mo- like, most important thing. So the dragon will sometimes blow the smoke down, and then the smoke ball goes across the bottom, and that's when you jump. So you can jump, and when you're in the air jumping, this is the only time you can hit hit the dragon, you throw some axes when you're high in the air, and then you can get like one or two hits on the dragon, usually just one. And you have to get something like, I don't know, I think it's like 20 or 25 hits on them. I, I don't know the exact number. But just getting like two hits is really fucking hard to do. So getting, and so this is where the RNG is involved in the game. Like I said, a lot of it's not, a lot of it's right. the same. But the dragon is RNG. So um, the, I would imagine, like it's kind of like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, on NES, like when you first load on the game, you, right. like you might like the uh, the TNT 
might appear in a certain building. So, you know, or like Friday the 13th, like Jason might appear on a certain part of the map. It's like that kind of thing where when this dragon screen loads, I would imagine it's loading a thing to where it's this certain pattern that you don't know or something for the dragon. It's either a pattern or it's just totally random. I don't know. But you don't know. Every time you go, you fight this dragon, you don't know if he's going to be breathing across, down, when you can't count that it's not the same every time so you have to learn to react to that smoke uh in a split second and here's the hard part about it you have to decide what your move is in a split second so as soon as that smoke comes out of his face the you split. need to know whether it's horizontal or ground you, or... You n- you need to decide in a split second, and you have to do it like 25 times in a row or something perfectly. Because if... Let's say that... Uh, let's say that he blows it uh, down, and you decide to duck, you're dead. Because by the time the Dirk does his animation where he's like getting down... You don't have enough time to have his animation to get back up and to jump out of the way. There's not enough time. So... As soon as that comes out, you see one frame of that going down, you know you have to jump. You jump. If you fuck that up, you are fucking dead. So what I'm saying is this is you have to be able to think and make that decision in like probably two to three frames and you have to do it like 20 something times. And it's not like it's always the same where you can memorize it. Exactly. And that, if, if you could, then it wouldn't be that hard. Right. But because it's random, it's probably one of the hardest bosses on NES right up there with like Judge Doom. Right. I, I would say it's probably harder than Judge Doom. And Judge Doom is really tough. Um, that's another like really annoying like boss fight. Um, but yeah. Um, and this and all this that I've said is like, <sighs> oh, but here, oh, here's why. Here's why this is like the worst game ever, though. So I, so <laughs> you understood, you understood all that, right? I, I love that you talked about it on a very intellectual level. Like this is how you overcome this. But now you're going to talk about why you should it. <laughs> well, wait, wait, though. Uh, so that, if it was just what I just explained, I'd be like, it's kind of respectable, kind of cool that you have to you have to think that quickly. Right. Here's what ruins it. So that smoke that comes out, sometimes the NES can't handle it and it flickers. So sometimes, you know how I said, like, as soon as that smoke comes out, you have to just make that quick decision of right. whether you're going to be standing, jumping, ducking, any of that. Sometimes the NES is like flickering and making, and then you can't see the smoke for the first few seconds. So that's when you have to like get lucky that you jumped or ducked because you couldn't see it because the NES can't handle it. And that's where it's a bad game. Wow. So everybody that talks about the beginning part, yeah, that's sure. I guess that that's not even really bullshit. It's fine if you just figure it out. The dragon is the bullshit. 100%. Hundred wow. percent. It's it's like what I think of with Back to the Future for NES. Yeah. Everybody talks about like, oh, uh, this or that sucks in Back to the Future. You want to know what really sucks in Back to the Future on NES? What? The very last thing in the game. Once again, like Dragon's Lair, um, how the how there's the flickering on the smoke. That's the worst thing about the game. Back to the Future on NES. Let's say you get all the way to the end of the game, and there's the famous, you know, the DeLorean. You yeah. finally get to the DeLorean. You go down the street in Back to the Future and the fucking car is going down the street. What do you got to do? 88 miles per hour, hit the thing, Back to the Future, right? Well, let's say that you were doing pretty good and you had like five lives, six lives, seven lives, eight lives. Let's say you're doing amazing. You had like nine lives. Right. You get to the end, you get one attempt. If you don't hit the thing, you go back to the beginning of the game even though you had another, like, eight lives left. You don't get to try the DeLorean again. Oh, that's ridiculous. It's fucking bullshit. You should be able to try that eight times because you had eight lives. Otherwise, what is the point of having lives? Yeah, and it's literally, like, a minor programming thing. Like, it's literally like, oh, go to here instead to there. Yeah. But they, you know... <sighs> they should just reload the beginning of the of the DeLorean stage because exactly. you had more lives left. Yeah. So I say that's what's the worst part about Back to the Future on mm-hmm. NES. And Dragon's Lair, um, if somebody f- took the game and, like, fixed 
the dragon at the end. Right. I could say right now, play it, but I can't say play the real. Because you'll game. get to the end and you'll be like, oh, I went through all this and it's bullshit. It, and it's total bullshit. Yeah. You know what? Play it with save states so that you can cheese your way through it and then at least you did it. Well, I guess. Yeah. Or, just, then, wa- or just watch me play it. Yeah, yeah. Watch Mike play it. So, And that's why I said to you, you're like, oh, can you beat this game right now? If I do, if I do it over and over, eventually I can do it. Right, but you never know what you're gonna get. But you never and know. And it could like lag or whatever. And it could lag or it could flicker. Yeah. And you might be fucked. Exactly. Wow. So that's Dragon Slayer. Never play it. Never play it. <laughs> never play it. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's it for talk about games this week, guys. We have a Patreon uh, if you'd like to see more content. Um, and there's also title cards on there. All that good stuff. Yeah, so check out the Patreon. We do a new, we do a separate Patreon only episode every week that you could check out, and there's some good ones in there. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs>